Anthony Redamonti with Copy Controls. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a web page. <clears throat> so um, please refer to my previous video on how to uh, configure the drive for TCP IP mode. After you've done that, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, download an IDE to edit HTML and JavaScript files. I use Visual Studio Code. It's free online. You go here, Visual Studio Code. And download it. So, um, what is in the web.zip file? Well, first of all, uh, web.zip is a folder uh, that we zipped uh, and compressed. So, what's in the web folder? Uh, well, you're looking at it right here. We have the uh, these four files, but really, all you need is these three files: index index.html jQuery.js and main.js. This is our main um, JavaScript uh, application. This is for formatting JSON commands that we'll be sending to the drive. So, really, if you if you are sending JSON commands, you need to include that um, file in your project. Uh, and then index.html. That basically is your custom GUI that you're creating. And then here, I just threw in a picture that I'm going to include in my GUI. So, uh, again, that we, you would uh, select all of these and you would um, create the web.zip um, compressed uh, folder. So, now let's go to Visual Studio Code. This is what uh, Visual Studio Code looks like. So, uh, you go to File and you open the folder and you're taken to this um, this GUI here that we're going to edit these files with. So um, first we'll look at the main JS file. So at the in the beginning here um, we are going to be uh, declaring variables and I set them to specific values so I have counts per rev and a velocity loop limit, um, and uh, so this could be any variables that you you'd use in your project. I have a function here called the start function, so that's called by the HTML file when on a startup. Uh, when the document is f uh, ready and loaded, this function will be called. What does it do? Well, it gets the counts per rev of the motor, and then it uh, calls this updates values function. So first, let's look at get counts per rev. So here's your a typical function that uh, in um, JavaScript. So uh, first, uh, the get JSON command here is sent. So it's a JSON command, and it will be getting this parameter ID 1062 if you look up 1062 in the parameter dictionary you won't find anything um, that's because this is actually getting parameter 62 in flash so uh, if we go to our calculator here 1062 parameter uh, uh, bit 12 is set for flash parameters and you'd set this to 0 uh, for getting parameters in RAM. So um, the counts per rev is a flash only parameter. So uh, these two bits, uh, 13 and 14, are used for selecting um, for multi axis drives, selecting uh, which axes you're talking to. So this is axis A, it's just set to zero. This would be for axis B, this would be for axis C, and then this would be. If it was a four axis drive, the fourth axis, axis D. So seven zero six two. Um, but yeah, that's how you would uh, select the parameter that you're going to be uh, communicating with or getting in this case. So we're going to get that parameter and then we're going to call this function CB. This is called a callback function. And the callback function will 
um, return the data that we collected, the counts per rev, and we'll assign it to this variable that we declared up here. Raw counts per rev are here. So this is going to be overwritten with the actual counts per rev. And it'll print that out to the GUI, console.log that value. Then the next uh, function was update values. So this is handy because the update values function has a timeout inside of it where it will call this function every 150 milliseconds. So every 150 milliseconds, it will call the update parameters function. So it's calling itself every 150 milliseconds. So if you're familiar with uh, programming, uh, if you've done a little bit yourself, you know about multi-threading. Uh, JavaScript does not have multi-threading. So you need to find um, thread safe uh, ways of calling functions. This is a thread safe way. It's uh, this set timeout function. Um, if the function um, gets, uh, gets stuck or, or crashes, uh, the timeout value when that expires will uh, end that uh, function call. So it, it won't keep trying to execute the function, it'll just uh, abort. So that's why you use set timeout. But every 150 milliseconds, it'll call itself and will update these parameters. That's what we have here, update parameters. So uh, this is how you would get a, a, an array of values. <clears throat> so here we have an array and we're getting these values and then it's calling the callback function and it's assigning those values to parameters that we have locally. So you could use those in uh, a GUI or um, in your code as it as they update in real time. <clears throat> Here we have a, a trajectory sequence. So this is how you would. Uh, so when when this uh, function is called, we will first start here at the end, where we will set these parameters to these values. And then we will call this function. You can uh, you can address up to uh, nine parameters. And so uh, here we have the save function. This is sending a binary command. Um, so this is an opcode, opcode hex 11. So if you're familiar with serial binary, um, we have opcodes and they define if you're getting or setting a parameter um, as well as trajectory uh, commands. So this is a trajectory command and it's sending a T3 command, which is the save command. Um, and so that's a serial binary command. And then here we have a set parameters function that's called, uh, so, so in a way you can see how this is working backwards whenever you call a function. And at the end we have response to trajectory sequence command. I'm going to print out the response from the drive. So that's that. And now uh, this is how you would jog uh, positive. This is a jog positive function. Um, and um, this is an abort function. So here I included a little comment. If you have multiple drives on your network, um, this is how you would address the drive. Uh, that's downstream from your um, from the drive that you load this web page into. Again, you only want to load uh, a web page into one drive on the network. You don't want to have crosstalk with multiple masters. Um, all the drives obviously have to be configured for TCP/IP mode, um, but only one of them will have the web page loaded into it. So here we're addressing another drive. We're going to be um, sending a T0 command, which is the abort command, to this drive. And yes, that's how you would um, send commands. So here we have clear latched faults function um, that sets negative one, sends negative one to uh, the 
uh, latched fault status register A4. Um, and uh, yeah, here's a kind of an interesting uh, line of code here. We are uh, getting the value that's input in this text field and we're parsing it. And then we're going to convert that to uh, from RPM to 0.1 counts per second. And then we're going to uh, set the VLOOP max to that value. So this is kind of interesting. This is a way of uh, an interactive GUI where uh, you have an input in RPM. We convert it to the drives units, and then we set that to um, send that to the drive. So now let's look at the index.html file. Here we have um, the title, Copley customer web page. We have the uh, button properties. So we have a green button and a red button. And we have a hover property where we hover over it and it changes color. And then we have um, here the background. We're going to set the background color and we import the Copley logo. So you include, uh, again, right here, we included a Copley logo. It's a picture. And we can import it into our into our uh, web page. Here is where we specify the color of the background of the web page. Here we have a button group. So uh, a button, a group of buttons that are uh, linked together, um, we call a button group. And you can specify that each one's uh, width. And then also here we have functions that you might recognize from our uh, main.js file that we can call here. So if you click on these buttons, they'll call these functions. So this will run a trajectory sequence. Uh, this is the text that's held within the button itself. Um, and then here are the button properties that you would uh, specify, the green button. And then we have the abort uh, function, and I label it e-stop. Uh, so it'll come up as e-stop in the GUI, but it'll call the abort function when you click on it and it's going to be a red button. Um, here we have uh, not a button group, but a kind of a standalone button and a text field. Um, and so uh, this is the text field that will display the speed in RPM. It's read only, um, so it's for displaying purposes. And then the uh, here's the VLOOP max. Um, RPM. This is where you would set the VLOOP max, as I showed you earlier, uh, and input RPM, and it'll convert that and send uh, 0.1 counts per second to the to the drive. So it'll set the VLOOP limit. And then uh, at the end of your HTML file, you have to include the main.js script. Uh, so you're linking your main project with this HTML file, and then also you have to include the jQuery.js. So if, if you have uh, JSON commands like we've been sending, you must have the jQuery.js. It's a standard file that uh, defines the format of the JSON commands. And then here uh, we are actually, uh, the HTML file is kicking off the whole application with this function called start JavaScript. So as you remember, start JavaScript will get the uh, counts per rev of the motor and then uh, begin that loop of um, getting the parameters. And uh, yeah, that is uh, the breakdown of how to design a simple uh, web page. You can get more um, intricate and I can show you uh, kind of where I, uh, I simplified this uh, from an earlier example I wrote. So let me close the folder here. How do I do that? Let's see here. Open folder. Okay. JavaScript. Oh, yes, save it. Yep. Always make sure to save your work.
So you can get uh, more intricate with these um, web pages. You can load uh, canvas elements and you can uh, load all sorts of uh, interesting um, interesting designs into your GUI and make it your own um, custom web page. So this is just an example I was going to show um, once this loads. <clears throat> Oh, here it is. So the uh, this is an example of a um, of the GUI. So we have here a track bar, and we have an odometer. Uh, this is open source. You can find this online. The the Tesla odometer. Um, I also uh, so this whole uh, thing here you see is a is a canvas element where I can paint the uh, where I can create the uh, <laughs> a canvas you think of painting, but um, I can create this uh, motor shaft, and then I can uh, you know, spin that in real time. Um, and then the uh, odometer, which will display the speed and the current. And um, yeah, so that, uh, without uh, going any further, that's how you would create a web page.